are in Britain, we're shaping up to play a pivotal role in the industrial revolution that's happening in India. The UK is a pioneer in advanced engineering and its capabilities in innovation, design, systems and quality are supporting India's ambitions to compete at the cutting edge and to meet the expectations of millions of new consumers. Aside from solving immediate challenges, these collaborations are starting to have much wider implications. Between them, Britain and India are fast discovering the scope for co-creating and co-producing entirely new sources of engineering value. The UK has a lot to contribute to India's upgrading of its industrial and manufacturing performance. India has the capacity to become a real manufacturing hub, not just for India itself, but also to export into those areas around it. And the UK has a, a real role to play in that growth. UK is developing, has developed, and will develop technologies in manufacturing, both process technology and also product technology, which Indian industry can use in order to catalyze its performance. Once again, we've seen tremendous growth here. And I think when I look at India and the development, particularly of what we call advanced manufacturing, the development of key sectors such as those in the clusters that we're seeing down in Bangalore, once again, uh, when we compare it with perhaps the, their neighbour, China, we're seeing significant growth rates here of an average 7 8% a year. As in India, as in some of the other Eastern Asian countries, these growth rates have been tremendous. It has been an enormous and an ongoing uh, tr enormous transformation. On the innovation campus at the University of Wolverhampton in Telford, revolutionary techniques in industrial design and supply are being explored and applied. Providing a comprehensive engineering education, their aim is to ready students for industry. The University of Wolverhampton has a wide range of innovative strategies and methods for manufacturing as well as teaching and learning. In terms of an industrial edge, the ways in which modern design is approached relies heavily upon the mechanism used for subsequent manufacture. However, with the new technologies we're now pioneering, a completely fresh approach can be taken at the design phase, which in practical terms means a real opportunity for innovation. In terms of expertise in, in manufacturing, Additive Layer Manufacturing, or ALM, is an area which is revolutionising conventional methods of manufacture. The technology generates solid metallic structures from metallic powders, allowing structures which previously could only be dreamed of um, to now be made, opening up huge possibilities for future manufacturing. In addition to ALM, the university also works within the supply chain. Automatic identification systems are used to improve efficiency through the incorporation of technology for the identification of a company's assets. The University's Demonstration Centre showcases the implementation of this technology and also offers consultancy for systems application and also implementation. The University is located in the heart of England's industrial sector, which uh, major companies such as Jaguar Land Rover, Aston Martin, Toyota and many others are based. In addition to this, the motorsport industry is, is significant within the UK and the UK actually accounts for approximately 75% of global research and development. Um, with engineers in high demand, it was necessary to supply the industry the graduates they require. So students are offered a wide range of activities to enhance their, their studies. Formula Student is an international competition for university students to design and build their own car to regulations. The competition is then decided at the Silverstone Racetrack at the end of every academic year. In addition, we are running a Formula Renault race car against professional opposition and which is raced internationally, all of which gives students beneficial experience before even completing their studies. Additive Layer Manufacturing, or ALM, is an area where a huge amount of research and development is being undertaken. The technology is so new that the full capabilities are yet to be realised. The team who run the ALM section are working with a large number of industrial leaders from a wide range of industries who all share a common interest, and that is that the next generation of engineering problems may very well be resolved by the innovative use of additive layer manufacturing. 
The differences we can make by equipping our students with the skills that are necessary is quite significant. Engineering is all about solving problems. In the first instance, we have tailored our courses specifically to a particular industry and support this with a range of club activities. These include the Formula Renault race team, where students prepare and run a race car with a professional driver. Formula Student, where students design, build and then drive their design car. Human Powered Flight, where students design, build and then fly their design. Flight Simulation, where students design and build a flight simulator. All of these aspects assist with the making of theoretical practical. And finally, the Telford campus is a bespoke facility where only engineering takes place. This gives us the ability to offer students a bespoke environment to complement their learning. Indian companies can best draw on the UK's knowledge in design and technology by engaging with UK companies and also UK companies engaging with Indian companies. The UK India Business Council regularly forms fora in which the two uh, parties, UK and Indian companies, can meet and discuss common issues, common market practices, etc. And out of that engagement comes ideas and projects. Some of the projects that we're working on at the present moment involve um, strengthening the linkages between academia and between the corporate in order to generate innovation in process technology as well as product technology. Ideas that are coming out are looking at 3D printing, are looking at how we can strengthen and improve engineering around um, oil and exploration development, looking at issues around civil aviation and improving techniques in, in the manufacturing of the various components that go into these. These are all areas where the collaboration is active and ongoing and will strengthen. There's a very substantial opportunity in terms of Asian countries sourcing technology and the products that lie behind those technologies uh, in partnership, I would say, uh, with UK. Uh, even with the, the growing strength of many of these Asian economies, even uh, the mighty tiger itself, China, uh, India and some of the other ASEAN countries, that not every nation can have complete sectoral coverage of manufacturing and in engineering technology. We in the UK have some very, very strong industrial sectors, world leaders, and I look for example at aerospace, I look at automotive, I look at advanced electronics, I look at pharmaceuticals, and therefore there's enormous opportunity for British companies to partner uh, with many Eastern Asian countries in further developing the technologies of the future and of course opening up developing markets as we and they go. The appetite for innovation is high. The challenge often lies in how best to transfer Britain's knowledge in developing top line solutions. At Seven Glowcon, ways are being found to create more value locally and to develop skills in its customers. At Severn Glowcon we've been looking at the potential for uh, our innovative technologies in, in Asia. It's a very interesting market, the, the Asian market is generally quite innovative and quite forward thinking and uh, has always been interested in new products. Perhaps the more difficult thing is actually the culture of how to contract and how to introduce. What we find works well is that first of all we talk about the technology and get interest about the technology and then we talk about how it will bring advantage and commercial benefit before we really start to talk about how we can bring it into the market. Well Severn Glowcon is all about uh, developing, designing and manufacturing products for extreme uh, uh, challenges. It's what we've been doing for the last 50 years. We work in uh, low temperature cryogenic applications, we work in high temperature steam applications. So it's something that we as a business are very used to, but it's never anything other than a challenge. Technically it's a challenge, we have to design, we have to innovate. We have to use the best of the skills that are available to us, but perhaps more importantly we use the experience that comes from our repair intelligence process which allows us to understand how products act in the field over the long term, how they might fail, how we can improve them 
and then generally uh, improve our products by continuous improvement rather than research and development. It's a very effective way of dealing with the challenges of such extreme uh, markets because you're not just seeking to find a solution, you're developing a solution over time. Innovation is part and parcel of the very ethos of our business. Uh, we work with universities to develop uh, new products. We look at uh, how we can take existing products and develop them further by innovative thoughts. We, we use our engineering expertise not in the short term but in the long term. It's a very core part of our business. Seven Glocon has over the last uh, seven or eight years been developing a substantial infrastructure. Uh, we started with uh, developing new factories in the UK, but have since uh, developed uh, and expanded further uh, major factories in, in, in Asia, particularly in India. But the way in which to fulfil capacity, but also to help the market, is to, to look at a localisation strategy. To not just do all of the manufacturing in major centres, but to look at what we can do in terms of completion or testing or, or using local resources to provide value locally but also to give us ex extra capacity. So yes we can improve our factories, yes we can put more factories into demanding markets but a really good and valuable way to progress our business and to help local uh, localisation strategy is to put uh, smaller, more flexible completion facilities in, in smaller markets. For the last 10 years we've been taking uh, core uh, engineering people and putting them into new markets as we grew them, into Brazil, into the Middle East, into Southeast Asia, into China, so that we can put skills there who can work closely with our customers to understand the applications and to understand the technology. But of course that's not really sustainable in the long term, so part of that plan is also to develop local skills. So we use our, our expatriate uh, specialists to train, develop and to put competence and experience into the local workforce so that they can then take over in the long term and expand our capability. That gets us the business but then we have to deliver it, so it's important also that we do uh, skills training at a vocational level, so training technicians. So it's two things, it's about making sure that you put skills in to work with our customers in the first place and then making sure in the long term we've developed uh, sustainable skills locally. There are significant opportunities for co-creating value, co-creating co uh, production and technology opportunities in India. I think one of the most high profile and one of the most important indeed for the British economy, of course, has been the Tata investment, not just in core steel, as it was called, but in helping to develop or rather redevelop one of our most successful car companies in terms of JLR. And of course it works both ways. We're seeing significant British investment in India in terms of plants, of course, at Bangalore. And I look at one of our mid-size member companies, Ecentra Filtronic, as it used to be called, in terms of developing, buying up plant and capacity uh, in a, a new factory at Bangalore. But let us be clear, the days of pure market penetration, I believe, are long gone. This is about co-production and co-creation of value. We're seeing productive partnerships across a whole area, range of areas in, in between India and the, and the UK. And it really, is, it really is quite exciting. If you look at in the area of uh, defense, for instance, there are collaborations between uh, Indian companies, the Mahindras, with uh, companies in, in the UK, uh, BAE, for instance, Rolls-Royce, for instance. If you look at the Tata organization, there are collaborations that are occurring um, it, with UK companies as well. It's across the range that we're seeing companies wanting to talk to companies, collaborate, develop their techniques, and then roll them out in ways that are most efficient. Established in 1815, Hayward Tyler has a long pedigree in engineering, bringing innovation and reliability to the entire energy sector. In high-performance, high-pressure fluids, it has a market-leading reputation in developing the kinds of mission-critical solutions that are needed to power growth.
Well, there's a huge opportunity for Hayward Tyler within the Asian markets. If you look at what we do, our kit is all about making fossil-fired power stations more efficient. Three quarters of the coal-fired power stations being built over the next 25, 30 years are going to be out of India and China. And we're well placed as the global market leader in boiler circulating pumps to take advantage of that. Very much looking forward to the opportunities, as we have done over the last 10, 20, 30 years, continuing to expand in this key area for us. We're one of the oldest engineering companies in the UK, so we've got a rich and proud history on which we can draw. Our core product, the boiler circulating pump, we invented it uh, over 50 years ago. We've evolved the design of that product as we've seen our marketplace change to supercritical, to ultra supercritical designs. And that stands us in very good stead as we look to develop and further enhance our brand within the Asian market. As a great British company, we're very well placed to compete on the world stage. We've got a fantastic brand, well renowned for reliability, got a good heritage. And if you look at the end markets in which we operate, reliability is absolutely key. Mission criticality is a two words that we continue to use, whether it be in fossil fired power generation, nuclear power generation, or the oil and gas markets. That's why people come to Hayward Tyler, because we deliver on the promises we make. Well, the way that we've engaged with the markets in Asia is really by directly to start with. It's all about relationships. These markets are not markets that you can go in and out of pretty quickly. These are relationships that we've built up over many decades. We first went into the Chinese market way back in 1978. We've got a big installed base within China. So we're either working directly with our customers or we're working via trusted agents or we've been able to call on the wider resources of the UKTI, in China for instance, the CBBC, um, and within other geographies that the local UK government support. Well, we're looking to develop strategic relationships with our customers. If you look at our history, you know, we invented the world's first submersible motor, we invented the world's first sealess pump, most recently we've delivered the world's largest fluid-filled motor for subsea environment, we have a rich history of research and development and innovation and we're looking to partner with our customers to make sure that they can deliver what they need to to their end customer. Well over the last few years we've been through a, a continuous improvement exercise. We've looked at the continuous improvement of our people, of our products and of our processes. And we've seen the benefits of that continuous improvement across the entire group. Most recently we've been recognised as best in class by the likes of Rolls-Royce. We've won awards for our manufacturing information systems. We've won awards for the training and development of our people, all of which stand us in great stead to ultimately deliver on our promises to our customers. Well, our capabilities, ultimately the customers come to us because we deliver on the promise that we make to them. It's about being on time in full. It's about being right first time. It's about engineering excellence. We have the brand, we have the pedigree, we have the heritage to ultimately be able to deliver against that. And that's why we're the market leader in mission critical applications when it comes to difficult to handle fluids, high pressure, high temperature. British companies are seen in Asia with ever more confidence and ever more dynamism. I think what we have seen since uh, this, the tragedy of our recession, of course, has been a rebirth, very much a renaissance of British manufacturing and engineering. And with that, of course, has come significant confidence. And when I look today at British branding of our technology and our products linked to some of the technologies and the sectoral strengths that we have, then I see significant more uh, activity taking place. Joint activity, I think as we've discussed a bit earlier, joint activity where that British engineering branding seen for quality and reliability is really stamping its mark on those markets and therefore creating uh, the opportunities for further joint ventures and further co-production and the creation of co-value. As millions move into the cities and start buying packaged goods, expectations about safety and performance are rising amongst consumers and regulators. As a specialist in product inspection, Metla Toledo is helping manufacturers to develop systems, sensors and solutions to operate at scale.
As more and more people move to urban centres across Asia, it is very important that the ability to purchase branded products is improved and that the manufacturing and quality conformance of those products is increased across all of the food manufacturers in Asia. The product inspection division of Metlet Lido has been established and growing rapidly in Asia for many years. We focus on providing global standards and high quality, high performance products and equipment but making sure that to every country we present ourselves and act as a local supplier. The challenges that Asian food and pharmaceutical producers face is exactly the same as the challenge faced in the Western markets. The Global Food Safety Initiative applies a common set of standards and more and more of the local producers are having to invest to meet the requirements of the global standards. One of the things that we've learned about business in Asia is that there are some applications and some habits of the food producers and the retail sector which demand slightly different configurations of products and a slightly different interpretation of the user interfaces. So Asianized content of the products, not just in terms of languages but in terms of the ease of use and the, uh, the compliance reporting can be slightly different. Our customers have very precise requirements. The consequences of physical contamination reaching their end users could be very destructive to their business as well as giving them uh, obvious legal problems. Consequently, we strive to ensure that we anticipate the needs of regulatory bodies in the frameworks that they operate, which can be different globally. Um, and you know, contained within our solutions are many ways of providing data in a way that can be recognised by, by those regulators. Uh, clearly our machines themselves are precision engineered, so we have many levels of, of information per inspection that can be translated into data which is onwardly communicable. In considering cost of ownership, uh, we have to consider the total life cycle requirements of our, of our customers. We believe that we offer reliable and robust equipment that is absolutely right for purpose. These are critical differentiators. We really aim to make sure that we understand the application and that the equipment is the best to match the requirements that the customer has. In doing so, we limit interventions uh, ensure that they have very, very good uptime statistics. Innovation plays a, a critical role in our, in our business, not only in terms of the products that we offer, but the way in which we bring our applications knowledge to bear. We have a lot of experience across all the product inspection lines, and uh, you know, we feel that that's a key differentiator for us. Even though the technologies are relatively well established, there are very important steps that we can take, particularly in terms of stability of the product, uh, in terms of the energy consumption, and of course ultimately in terms of subtle gains, but vital gains in terms of sensitivity of physical contaminants. We have been working with, uh, with third party development uh, partners in recent years, and the metal detector part of the business especially has done some very gainful work with the University of Manchester on what's some fairly rarefied technology that certainly is bringing a lot of competitive advantage to our products. Looking to the future, we see a bright opportunity in an attractive marketplace. Highly competitive, but we believe that the recipe of investing in local excellence and recruiting and retaining high quality people in the sales and service teams locally and underpinning that with global products is the right recipe to succeed in the Asian market and it is that which Metro Toledo will continue to do. There's a very strong demand amongst Asian engineers at all levels to, to develop technologies and develop uh, technological solutions. In many cases, of course, they are strongly encouraged by the states. Uh, and what we've seen, of course, in the likes of Thailand, the likes of China, uh, also in India to a very large degree, are state-sponsored solutions to develop technology. We're seeing very, very high levels of research and development. Uh, we're seeing a very high level of incentives. And I think also 
Of course, they're looking to a large degree to some of our British companies to support that. And uh, w when I look at just some of the, the work that our universities are doing with some of those countries we've just discussed, I think it's something that we can build on. But in specific answer to question, there is an enormous appetite, an enormous hunger for those young and upcoming engineers to develop the solutions of the future. All along the chain of creating engineering value from technology innovation and creative design to data systems and product quality, this combination of Britain's expertise and experience with India's dynamism and scale is promising to open up a whole series of markets. There are a number of ways in which Indian businessmen and women can develop contacts and get to understand the British market. Uh, the government, I think, has a role to play in terms of support to UKTI, to our embassies around the world. But of course, one of the key, one of the key avenues is, of course, the UKIBC, which does such a good job in supporting Indian and British businesses. Companies that want to follow up their interest in British engineering, and I would urge them to do so, can contact either the UK Trade and Investment, UKTI, which is a government organisation located in the Deputy High Commissions in India, or with my organisation, the UK India Business Council, which is a business-led organisation which focuses on engineering and advanced engineering, the opportunities. Contact my offices in Bangalore or in Gurgaon or in Mumbai. All of these places have experts who will be able to answer your questions and put you in touch with the right people. But I do urge you to contact us to get that information. Well, that's all we've got time for at the moment. But if you'd like to know more about any of the organisations that we featured in the programme, then visit our website, thebusinesschannel.tv. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>